member for Elgin, Middlesex, uh, London. Thank you, Speaker. I'm uh, glad to have a few words on Bill 30, Family, Family Caregiver Leave Act. Uh, the bill amends the Employment Stand Standards Act uh, 2000. Section 49.3, which creates family care caregiver leave, is added to the Act. Under Section 49.3, an employee is entitled to a leave of absence without pay to provide care or support to a family member who has a serious medical condition. An employee may take up to eight weeks per calendar year with respect for each family member described in the section or prescribed by regulation. Entitlement to family caregiver leave is in addition to any entitlement to family uh, medical leave under Section 49.1 and personal emergency leave under Section 50. Just wanted to review that because it's been a few days since uh, I've listened to the debate. Um, my first point is, is, is there really a need for this bill uh, at this point in time? I, I haven't received any letters, any emails, any indication that anybody really wants this bill to be at this time. Um, usually I get quite a few emails. I'm sure many of our colleagues here will, will hear from their constituents and stakeholders when there is actually a, a bill up for discussion, giving their points. And, I, and I'll make two references here. I, I, I think I get about, uh, I don't know, 100 emails a day just on this uh, uh, wind uh, energy from MPP Lisa Thompson, her, her motion, at per day. Okay. Private member's motion which calls for the moratorium on further industrial wind turbine development until third party health and environmental studies have been completed. So I, I know this is an issue of the day and I'm hearing every day that people support uh, this motion and I, and I hope on the House later on when we debate that we'll, we'll pass this motion. But uh, as I'm saying, it, they are letting me know and with the caregiver leave I have yet to hear anybody and maybe when I get back to my office today I'll have a few but another point here that I know it's, it's, it's big out there and I know it's a huge issue because I'm getting lots of ish emails more now I, I don't know if you guys are getting on the value for money the horse racing uh, issues that are out there you know that's an urgent uh, problem that needs to be debated and I and I hope the government will bring that up for a debate in the house well, exactly. I mean, I'm hearing here that the government, uh, at the end of the day, is taking in over a billion dollars that they can spend on health care education, and, and with one fell swoop of the pen, they're going to break an agreement uh, that's revenue sharing, and that billion dollars is going to disappear. And I don't know where they're going to get that money to uh, to replace uh, their costs in the health care education. But I mean, these are just uh, various issues that actually come across my desk. And 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 again, as I've, I've made earlier. I have yet to uh, hear a, a support or a yay or nay on the Caregiver uh, Leave Act. And, um, and I'm just wondering, I mean, I think the government works under perception. They want to give us the perception they're actually doing something when, when actually, yeah, they're, they're ignoring the economy, the jobs, things that we need to be dealing with. Um, they, they go on the perception that they're doing something, so they'll say they're discussing, they're passing these laws. Uh, it's something that's good for Ontario working together, their, their usual uh, spin. But uh, they also tried perception on other, other issues, like orange. They say orange is under control. There's no problems. They've, they've replaced the board of directors and everything's hunky-dory. But really, in the perception, uh, orange has been a total disgrace Scandal. to our province. And, uh, and I think uh, Mr. Smitherman, when he wrote the legislation, made huge errors, and the government has not picked up on them over the yeah. seven or eight years. E-health is another one. Uh, perception on our deficit, no problem. We're actually, this year, they, in their economic statement, they said they're, they're ahead of projections on the deficit. It's 16 billion instead of 16 and a half billion. Um, the debt, no problems, but you look at Drummond report, and we're headed to a $30 billion deficit in four years and $400 billion in debt. You try to run this government when you're $400 billion in debt, you think the services are are suffering today. You wait in four years' time at what services are really going to be like. So we need the government to stop living in the world of perception and just uh, giving people that we're working, giving this caregiver lack. We need them to start working on some hardcore issues. Um, the other thing I've noticed uh, in recommendations or reading about this, this is the sixth new leave of absence introduced in the past seven years. I, six in seven years. What have they done for job creation? What have they done for uh, uh, fixing the tax structure in the last seven years. I haven't seen it. I think, uh, before I personally uh, uh, dissect this part of the bill, is this, uh, this bill itself is sloppy. There's too many uh, open-ended uh, open questions, not enough definitions, 
I think it should be pulled back and rewritten. I, I think it's a sloppy, sloppy bill. But I'll, I'll dissect parts of the bill, parts of other bills. Personal emergency leave, declared emergency leave, family medical leave, reservist leave, organ donor leave. Um, personal emergency leave, just to review that one. Uh, there's actually a cutoff there for small businesses. If it's 50 or more employees, this, this leave uh, affects. And there's got to be a reason why there's a cutoff for small businesses. And, it's, and I think it's pretty obvious that uh, businesses with uh, few employees, it finds harder to replace uh, staff that leave. And, and while I support the personal emergency leave, I'm glad that there is a, a, a cutoff there for uh, small businesses. And it has a definition of an emergency, and it's limited to 10 days. I think any business can get by with an employee leaving for 10 days on short notice. I think that's fair, and uh, I think that was a good idea, and that's a good leave. Family medical leave, eight weeks are allowed, which uh, it's fine. I mean, we do get emergencies, and there's a clear definition of why you can leave. And, and sadly, it's uh, someone will pass away within 26 weeks. Um, and and we, we understand that. We're, we're a compassionate province, or a compassionate country, and we understand that when families in your, in your lifetime, once those stresses occur, it, it's good to uh, give support and go support your family member. The other benefit of this is that the federal government has actually said that they would support it for six weeks of EI insurance to help fund the person. So they're taking a leave from work, and instead of having the hardship of worrying about paying their mortgage or their car payments or their high energy costs, um, they are able to collect some unemployment insurance and they can focus on their, their family member or whatever to take care of. Uh, it is only for the spouse, the parent, child, family member, and that makes sense. Now, in this bill they talk about the person can take a leave because they have a serious medical condition. That term is not defined. How can employers and employees manage this kind of leave if the definition has not been set? Every other leave has a definition of how you can take that, that leave. Um, I looked up definitions of serious health conditions. Uh, one definition, uh, serious health conditions entitles employee to leave means an illness, injury, impairment, or physical or mental condition that involves either inpatient care or continuing treatment by a health care provider. The definition of inpatient care is relatively straightforward. Inpatient care means an overnight stay in a hospital, hospice, or residential medical care facility including any period of incapacity or any subsequent treatment in connection with such inpatient care. The term incapacity for purposes of this definition means inability to work, attend school, or perform other regular daily activities due to the serious health condition, its treatment or recovery from it. The definition of continuing treatment encompasses numerous different scenarios which are discussed in detail in the regulations that I was talking about. This comes from the United States. A serious health condition involving a continuing treatment by a health care provider includes the following. And now this is a different definition, incapacity in treatment. Incapacity in treatment requires a period of an incapacity of more than three consecutive full calendar days and any subsequent treatment or period of incapacity relating to the same condition that also involves A, treatment two or more times within 30 days of the first day of incapacity unless extenuating circumstances exist by a health care provider, by a nurse, under the direct supervision of a health care provider or by a provider of health care services under orders of or on referral by a health care provider. Or B, treatment by a health care provider on at least one occasion results in a regimen of continuing treatment under the supervision of a health care provider. The two treatments referred in A and the initial treatment referred in B above must be in person. The first or only in person treatment visit must take place within seven days of the first day of capacity. In-person treatment or the regimen of continuing treatment may take place after a period of incapacity has ended and the employee has returned to work. Therefore, leave may not have qualified for the leave of absent leave at the time it was taken and it may later meet the requirements of the leave and need to be retroactively designated as such. Confusing. Where's the definitions in that? And, and, and it's leading to problems in this area in the states. Um, what is a serious health condition? I mean, Illness, injury, impairment, or physical or mental condition that requires inpatient medical care and continuing treatment of a healthcare provider. Is that emphysema, uh, ruptured appendix, uh, asthma, heart attacks, bad back, arthritis, cancer, stroke, spinal injuries, nervous disorders, any serious injury caused by an accident or on or off the job, emotional distress, 
migraine headaches? What is the definition going to be? And uh, I think if you have this bill and you don't have the definition set out, I think that's truly unfair to employers and employees, those that are wanting to take the lead. Um, now, I'm going to talk about consultations with stakeholders. I, I, I just wonder if the government has taken the time to actually talk to small businesses. Um, has there been an impact analysis on, their, on how this will affect them uh, to run their businesses? They, this government here does have a habit of being indifferent to how legislation affects the job creators in, in communities, especially small town uh, areas like St. Thomas. Uh, and I've seen it firsthand at my pharmacy. Uh, our party here has campaigned on a promise to bring about a small business bill of rights, and I fully agree with it. And the main point was to consult with businesses before any new legislation or regulation is, is, is tabled. So the fact that it'll be known how a regulation or legislation will affect a small business. Uh, we as a party do recognize that small business is the engine of growth and the job creators. And this bill here has no exemption for small business or family medical leave, whereas family medical leave has cut off of 50 employees. Now, this, I'll just take this to personal level. Back at Yurik Pharmacy, uh, we're currently uh, 60 employees, so we'd be, we're good. We, we have enough coverage now. We've grown our business, um, not with the help of the government. We did it on our own. And we're now over 60. But back about 10 years ago, we had about 12 employees. And I can tell you now, if a pharmacist left my business due out of the blue um, to go uh, caregiver leave, uh, that would have devastated my business, number one. A uh, pharmacist is a highly skilled worker. Uh, they can't be just replaced by anybody in the business. Number two, uh, there's a shortage of pharmacists, and uh, especially in rural, not in Toronto. Toronto has a lot of pharmacists, but you go to rural communities up north or down south, uh, it's hard to find a pharmacist to come in to work, especially small cities like uh, St. Thomas or Elmer or Port Stanley. And uh, to actually find a pharmacist overnight would be uh, uh, quite hard. And, and, and I tell you, 10 years ago, we ran into a position that we actually ran out of pharmacists and, and being the employer, I was working around the clock every day, my brother and I, and um, it was tough. And the third part about it is if this pharmacist left and I was able to find a pharmacist to bring in, they're called locums, they don't work for anybody, they work for themselves, but their rates are uh, one and a half times higher than what we pay employees. It's, it's, it's highly expensive to bring these people in to work for us and and to have them trained to how our operations work. Um, that'd be a high cost to, to, to uh, our business 10 years ago. It'd be a high cost now, uh, but I think uh, we'd be able to manage it with the higher, higher staffing that we do have. So I, I just wonder if the government uh, actually thought about how economically this could be devastating to small family-run independent businesses out there. I think the government is so removed and, and, and they're focused on multinational co corporations. Uh, not every business out there has, is a big multinational com uh, company. And, and I think the larger employers out there, the factories that we have in, in the industrial sector, their union agreements probably already have a caregiver leave uh, in their contract. I would, I would bet money that the majority of them already do have it. So really, uh, is, is this bill going to really affect them or be any benefit to them? As I said before, I think the government should be focusing on our economy. Um, again, the structure and the operation. So employers are going to need to be more flexible with their hiring. Um, it's not going to be easy just to pick someone and train them for one specific job. They're going to have to do some cross-training. And maybe that's going to inhibit people being hired because they don't have the skills to be able to work more than one particular skill set in a, in a business. So you, you might actually be hurting jobs. I know this is a stretch, but you might actually be hurting jobs with this Caregiver la la Act. Again, the, the, the employer has to continue to pay benefits, has to bring in a replacement, and has to pay their, their, their salaries. And in this, this day and age when uh, costs to businesses are high, those that are running borderline, this might actually put small businesses out, out of business. The Auditor General report states electricity bills will rise 46% over the next five years. And I think uh, that cost alone is, is going to be hard enough on businesses, let alone pulling away um, staff. Um, and, and the questions that they ask, like, how, how long do you hire? I mean, a person can take a week at a time, up to eight weeks. 
do you hire for a week? Do you hire for eight weeks? And then someone comes back in three weeks. Cost you got to double, then you got to pay them out. I think it's. I think they need to sit down, review this bill, and actually call up some small business owners. I'll give them a list, and uh, they can call them up, and they'll get first hand, and, and they'll get an honest opinion from these business owners because uh, they don't like government either way, opposition or or uh, or the sitting government. They. Uh, they don't like government being involved in their businesses, and they'll tell you up front how bills like this would affect affect their businesses. Absolutely. I also have a concern: uh, the agricultural sector. I mean, uh, this t this type of bill, uh, especially during the spring planting and the fall harvesting, if an employee does uh, leave on that, the, the fact that the farmer has to go find someone to replace them. And in rural Ontario. Um, I don't know if there's really uh, that many out there that pull in to, to help with the harvest, let alone for them to pay. If it's a bad harvest year and uh, their, their yield is down and yet they still have to hire someone to come in, that might ac actually have them a uh, higher cost. I also want to talk about the financial crunch that this, this bill could have on people. The fact that the government has only expressed an intention to press the federal government to offer employment insurance benefits. So they're putting forth this bill for us to pass and they're going to expect people to leave work um, being compassionate, but they're not going to have any uh, employment insurance for them to cover them in their in their paying their mortgage or paying food and that. So I think the right thing to do, the right thing forward to do, would be for this government to actually talk to the federal government and get this agreement in place before the act is passed. I, I think uh, that's a smart thing to do. It, it's actually planning ahead, and I and I and again planning ahead. I always go back to uh, the fact that the government needs to start planning for this. Uh, Thirty billion dollar deficit we're headed for, and start and start dealing with the problems at hand. Uh, the federal government is working hard to balance its budget, and may not be able to uh, to afford extra payments into this caregiver act. They might actually just deny it. So you've done this act, good for you, but uh, no one can really take take uh, advantage of it because uh, there's no money for them to uh, to live their lives. Um, and the government, uh, as I said, likes to say everything's under control. I have uh, from the Auditor General's report just some words that kind of prove they're not. Um, while it is important to note that while the government has presented a plan to eliminate the annual deficit by 2017-18, no clear strategy or forecast has been articulated for paying down its existing and future debt. And I take that to heart because we have the Drummond report sitting on someone's desk in the government, and that's a plan to get the deficit down and uh, I'm sure they can come up with a plan and, and waiting till April when they give out the budget. Uh, we, we'd rather have that plan sooner or later so we can start working towards uh, being fiscally responsible in this province. Now the other thing is the, the Minister has talked about, uh, the Minister of Health has talked about increasing home care. Um, coverage for people, and I think that's great. I, I work with a lot of home care workers. I have worked, I'm now a politician, I guess I, I'm not working with too many right now. But I, I have worked with them quite a bit, and I think they're hard working people, the nurses that visit, the uh, physio, and, and it gives people a sense of uh, comfort in their home. Uh, if we have money going in to develop this home care system, Maybe we don't we don't need to rush on this Caregiver Relief Act because there is someone there that's going to be taking care of, of uh, your uh, family member while you work. Um, I know it's a tough thing to say, but it's it's, uh, it's tougher times. Uh, we want to focus on uh, supporting our small businesses and supporting family members, and and we need, we can't have everything. And I think if we're putting money in the home care and having the visitations and having someone there with your 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 loved one while you're able to still work, and we'll and you know I think. Um, Poor <laughs> together. I think, uh, as as a review, I mean, as a small business owner, and um, you just took me right out of my stock, Clarky. I'll take a rest. I could start talking about golf, but I won't. So just uh, just uh, just a review. Uh, we need to define uh, medical illness. Uh, we need to protect small businesses, and uh, you need to get the federal government on board with uh, covering the the leave. And uh, thanks for your time, and I appreciate your comments.